Hello, all. How's it going? My name is Ami, and uh, this is going to be a forgetful drawing, which is a um, uh, a drawing class. It's a series of simple drawing exercises that anyone can do, and really, I mean anyone. This is a really a drawing class for everybody, um, and they are designed um, to teach you the ways to observe um, the world and the things you see and be able to draw. Um, not thinking too much about what you think those things should look like. What does a teapot look like? What does uh, my friend look like? But really breaking down um, the the shapes and the forms and the tones you can see in the world in a way that you can kind of, your eyes translate them to your hands. So you don't think, oh, this is what a teapot should look like. You see the forms that you see and you're able to kind of put that down on paper without thinking about it too much. And it really kind of, these exercises are helped to design to like build those drawing observational muscles um, kind of help unlearn some of the things that maybe are impediments or fears that are built into drawing. Um, and for me, um, I really kind of uh, look at drawing as sort of sport or exercise. You kind of take that as a metaphor where, um, you know, there's your LeBron Jameses of the world who are going to be, you know, the top of the game and professionals and stars, but everyone can go out and play basketball. Everyone can go work out and people do it for different reasons. Um, some people do it for, you know, to feel better, to look good, to feel good, combination of all those things. But this is something thinking about, you know, whatever your favorite exercise or sport is, something you can do um, on a day-to-day -day basis, drawing um, as a creative outlet, as something to kind of build visual communication skills, just something to do when you, you're bored or you're looking for something to change, you know, anything. It could be a bunch of things, but I really want to look at it as something, remove the fear from from drawing and thinking I need to be perfect or I need to be a masterpiece. Anyone can do it. Anyone pretty much can draw. And I want you guys to encourage you guys to do that. And this is hopefully going to set you on the way with some exercises you could do every day to kind of start to build those, those drawing muscles. Anyway, um, welcome. And so while we're waiting to kind of start the lesson, I'm going to get to give everyone like a couple minutes to start. I want everyone to kind of gather their supplies. Um, first thing is, a pen or pens, a uh, marker or something um, to draw with. Um, you know, you can use pretty much anything. Um, we're not going to be doing any erasing. I really am moving against it. So I would kind of like discourage the use of pencils or at least a pencil with an eraser. I want you guys to draw with something kind of bold that puts down a strong mark. And they're definitely not going to be erasing. My, I can see through my camera what you're doing. So if anyone's erasing, I could be able to tell. Um, Anyway, so um, yeah, collect your a pen, any or a marker, or sharpie. You know, if you have a um, dry erase markers or highlighters or anything like that around, um, whatever you got, you know, feel free to bring a few things and experiment with a few things. Also, we're going to need to grab some paper, so everyone should go out and grab paper. Um, optimally, you'd have you know nice like white um, letter size paper. If you have a notebook or something or a sketchbook, that's fine too. You can even draw on the back of reuse something if you want, that's fine. Um, but paper is good. You can, if you only have like lined loosely paper, that's fine. If you have post-it notes, whatever it is, um, you know, feel free to go out and, and kind of grab it. So um, let's take a few minutes. The last thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set up a still life. And most of you probably know what a still life is from the famous paintings of, of your, um, but we're going to make our own still life. And this is something we're going to draw a few times today in a few different ways. And we're going to use it as the basis of our exercise. So collect any objects you have around the house. I'll show you guys an example of my still life. This is mine. Um, you can see um, I have my Deadpool and some wine and a goblet and some spray paint, salt and pepper, everything you, anything you'd need for um, a good time during the day. So if you want to go out and grab that, um, you know, take a couple minutes and we're going to get those and um, set those up on our table or desk, wherever we're drawing. And that's going to be the basis of the exercise we do today. So we give everyone a minute to do that. Um, while I am doing that, I just want to kind of talk about a couple things real quick. Um, let's see. Oh, if anyone feels like um, after seeing this, this, um, this lesson, they want to kind of donate to something. Um, um, doing this on behalf today of HAM, um, the um, Health Alliance for Austin Musicians. Um, if any, you know, Austin being the music city it is, it's um, been a great, you know, the music of Austin has been a great inspiration for my drawing, if you guys are familiar with my work. Um, oops, so trying to get in the camera there with it, also seeing my face. 
pull it back a little bit, sorry. So yeah, so Health Alliance for Awesome Musicians, um, myham.org, um, you know, cause without um, live music, awesome would kind of just be like Albany, New York with, you know, good uh, tacos and better weather and no disrespect to Albany. I love my North country, upstate New York people, but um, you know, Austin music is really important. You know, a lot of artists are hurting right now, especially. So if you have a little extra and you want to give and you find some value in today's um, lesson, please give to myham.org. And I'd also like to give a shout out to, um, who am I going to give a shout out to? Waterloo Greenway for putting this on. Um, Waterloo Greenway is a nonprofit, local nonprofit working with the city of Austin to create 35 acres of connected green space in downtown Austin along Waller Creek. You know, if any of you have been to the Creek show in past years and they always put that on, it's really been amazing. Um, they're also building this amazing space and park and amphitheater over on uh, Red River, if you guys have seen the construction. So that's going to be open soon. So give a shout out to Waterloo Greenway for putting this on. And we're really excited about that. So thank you, Waterloo Greenway. So anyway, hopefully you guys got it all, all together. My philosophy before we start, anyone can draw mostly. I don't like to be absolutist about anything, but it's really, as I mentioned before, my belief that most people in the world or anyone can really put a mark on, on paper and, and use that either as a catharsis or a way to express themselves or a way to communicate. And I think it's a muscle that everyone can build. And I think that would be great practice for everyone. So. We're going to get started for the first exercise. Hopefully everyone has their still life set up. Also feel free to hit me up in the comments if anyone's got any questions as we go. I'm going to try to keep my eye on the comments and see um, you know, what's going on. So here we go. So first thing I want you guys to do is grab your paper. Grab your marker, whatever you're going to draw with. I'm going to draw with this green Sharpie because that's how I feel today. And I want everyone, and I'm not going to show you guys what I'm drawing because um, I want you guys to just follow, not copy me and, and, and look at what I'm doing. I want you guys to follow the exercise and make it your own. And I really encourage people to share their work with me. Um, actually, before we do that, just to let you know, um, uh, if you guys want to share your work with me, I'd really appreciate it. My name, uh, my my website is, is gonzoviz.com. Gonzoviz is my company. I do live drawing, painting, and animation work. Um, and I also do workshops. So um, you can check that out. But if you want to share it with me, you can go to Ami. You can send an email to Ami at gonzoviz.com. I don't know if you can post in the comments. If you can post your, your images, that'd be great. If not, please email me, Ami at gonzoviz.com. If you have questions or if you, again, just want to share the work that you've done today, I'd really appreciate it. I love seeing you know, different people's work. I get really get inspired by the different approaches and how people interpret, you know, these exercises. So please share. And again, like everyone is going to do something great today. And I really just love to see the work. So think about this work as, as, as exercise, not as a final product and don't be bashful. Um, anyway, so yes, as we get started, let us um, draw a couple of squarish rectangles on a, our piece of paper. And I'll show you in a second. They don't have to be perfect squares. Mine are pretty imperfect actually. I just drew them really crooked, but I'll show you anyway. Just draw a couple on your paper like this. Um, if you really wanna just draw one on the page, that's fine. It's just kind of nice to see a couple side by side. But, um, and then we're gonna do a exercise called the four minute burn. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at our composition that we set up, the still life. And again, here's my still life, my Deadpool wine bottle, salt and pepper shaker. Um, party still life. And we're going to use that still life. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at it for four minutes and we're just going to draw what we see. And we're not going to go back and erase. If we put a mark that we don't like, we're just going to live with it and keep going. Um, I encourage you to draw your still life. Also think about what's in the background, in the foreground. Don't just have a thing in the middle of, of your box. I really want you to draw the edges of the rectangles that you guys are drawing in. So um, I want you to do is, yeah, I'm going to time you everyone for four minutes. We're going to look at our still life and I'll show you an example. I'll show you an example of um, kind of the past ones that I've done just so you can get an idea. These are some examples of some ones I've done so you can get an idea, but really want to fill up the page with drawing. So I want everyone to get ready and I'm going to give you four minutes and we're going to start drawing and we're going to just again, draw what you see. 
don't worry about making mistakes. If you if you put down a mark that you don't like, just keep going, keep filling in those squares and really try to hit those edges and fill in as much as you can about just what you see. Don't think about it too much, just what you see. And we're gonna do for four minutes and I'm gonna put the timer on now. Awesome. How'd that feel for everyone? This is uh, my quick sketch. And as you can see, it's pretty rough. Um, sorry, I'm getting used to my double screen. Um, I use a, a thick Sharpie. So any kind of mark that I put down is definitely visible. Um, you know, and you can see it almost becomes like a little abstract sometimes when you do it. And again, the whole exercise is idea to, is to kind of do this quickly and, and do a lot of them every day. And it starts to build those muscles between your eyes and your hands. So you don't, um, so that you can start to build it as a reflex as opposed to thinking too much about what you're doing. I started doing this in college. A teacher of mine had, um, this is an assignment. We had to do one of these four minute burns every day. And, um, you know, first I was like, eh. but you know, I actually became quite like addicted to it and started doing it all the time. And then I used to live in New York. I used to draw right, ride the subway. So I started doing it on the subway and I'd start to draw people. And it really kind of taught me how to kind of draw quickly, get down what was important and really start to, again, build those muscles where I didn't think too much. I didn't like go back and forth. I didn't go back in a race. I just kind of put something down live with it and saw it and kind of learn from it what, what I was doing. So, um, so that's, that's kind of a great exercise just to have do during the day, keep a piece of paper and a marker next to your, um, on your desk out there when you're working or you're learning or whatever. Um, and it's something you can carry with you all your life or put it together, get a little sketchbook and have that on the side of the table so you can kind of keep everything together. It's cool. So um, I'd love if anyone wants to kind of send me or post one of the drawings they did. If not, um, we'll move on to our next, um, our next exercise. And our next exercise is called contour drawing. And I will show you my contour drawings real quick. So contour drawings are, here we go. Sorry, I have a pile of paper on my desk. Contour drawings are basically, I want everyone to kind of look at their, at their, um, their still life they set up. Um, yeah, Car yes, Carol, you are supposed to be drawing. No, not me. You're supposed to be drawing the still life. So you're supposed to set up a still life. You can draw me if you want, but I'm going to move around. And again, we can draw people too, as long as they're pretty still. Um, that's fine as well. But um, yeah, um, let's uh, let's try to focus on setting up your own still life. And if you haven't set up a still life, you can really just look at a corner of your room or your house or wherever you're looking and sitting, and you can use what's already set up. You don't have to kind of set your own thing up. Um, it's helpful, but it's not that important. So um, if you don't have a um, still life set up, but you want to draw something, um, just look at something um, around the room. Okay, cool. Um, so yes, yeah, so what we're going to be doing now is called contour drawing. And what contour drawing is basically what it sounds like. You're going to look at your still life now, the same one you just did the quick drawing of, and you're just going to draw basically the edges that kind of create the forms of what you see. You're not going to draw like, all the details. You're not going to worry about the color of the tones, just the drawing, the contours of the shapes that you see um, and kind of build um, your drawing just with that kind of aspect of what you're doing. So just, just line basically. Um, and as part of this exercise and to make it a little bit more um, to kind of build those muscles. So you're kind of tearing down a little bit of those preconceived, uh, preconceived notions or the idea to fix anything. I want you guys to try to do your best to keep your pen or marker or whatever you're drawing with on the paper at all time while you're drawing. Don't pick it up. Just literally just have it all down. And if you have to kind of have an errant stroke that goes over something, um, that's fine. But try to keep your marker or pen the whole time we're drawing on the paper. And, um, and you, as you draw, you start to notice and see how this might feel a little bit different. And that's great. And that's what's important about this exercise. So I'm going to give us three minutes for this exercise. And um, we're going to just draw the contours, basically the shapes that you see on the page. Um, and don't worry about detail or color or anything like that. Okay. And, or shading, just lines. So I'm going to give you guys three minutes and we're going to start. All righty. How'd that feel for everyone? Anyone have any thoughts before we move on? Um, and it, it, I think one thing I kind of feel when I was drawing, and this is kind of, you can see my drawing and it's a little, see how the kind of the difference between the start, to, you see, you start to see the difference between the two different ways of drawing, but also thinking about how it feels differently when you're drawing that. Um, thinking about how you're, especially when you keep your, 
marker down or your pen down on the paper and you can't pick it up, it's, you start to learn a new way to track where you're at and track how the different objects all kind of lie together. And, and it's just, an, it's again, you building that muscle, you know, of, of unlearning like what you think you should see and just like what your hands and eyes start to build together. So um, if you feel that, then that's great. And it, keep doing this and you'll start to feel that a little bit more. Um, so the next exercise, we're gonna do pretty much the same exact thing. We're gonna do a contour drawing, except the big hitch is we are going to actually not pick, look at what we're doing at all. We're just gonna kind of draw blind. It's called a blind contour drawing. So exactly the same exercise, looking at the outlines in, of the shapes and creating those, using the lines to create those forms, but don't look at your paper at all. And you can keep your pen on your paper too. And I think you'll find leaving your pen on your paper will now start to help you navigate where you're drawing as you can't really look at your paper anymore. So please don't look at your paper. Um, also, don't really worry about drawing inside of a inside of a rectangle anymore. You can use a full piece of paper because you won't be able to stay inside this rectangle anyway. So we're going to do this exercise again using your still life. Um, and but this time, contour drawing, just the lines, making the forms, and no looking at your paper. And we're going to do just this for just two minutes because any more than that, it's a little bit of a nerve wracking um, exercise, but I think you guys will find it's, um, once you start to look at the results and see what you put down on the paper, it's going to surprise you. So no looking at your paper, two minutes, blind contour drawing, drawing the contours and shapes without looking at your paper and two minutes now and start. All right. So how'd that feel for everyone? A little nerve wracking probably. Actually, I drew mine. It's a little bit, it's a little bit crazy. Um, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, but I mean, as you start to draw these things, you'll actually see they start to form a little bit more closely to what you think they would be as opposed to the, the messy scribble that you think you're gonna get when you're not looking at all. And I think what, again, what happens is your eyes, now that you can't look, your, your hand starts to track and keep track of where it's going, sort of navigate your page. And also your, and your eyes are just telling your hand what to draw. So it was actually, this is a helpful exercise that I had when I was, when I used to draw people on the subway in New York. And a lot of times I didn't want people to know what I was doing because people might get pissed off. So I would just be looking and drawing and nonchalant about it. And I think, um, so I kind of use that in that way. And not that it, most people will be doing that, but anyway, it's a really great exercise. I know it's a little bit nerve wracking. It causes a lot of stress, but, um, at the end of the day, it's actually, um, something which is really helpful and sort of starting to build the, the, the way that your hand can see and navigate your page. So um, if anyone wants to send me what they've done, I'd love to see so far. In the meantime, we'll move on to another quick exercise. This one is I actually like a lot more for me personally. And it's something that I, um, I spent, I'll actually learn to do a lot pretty young. Um, and it's, I call it shape drawing. Um, if anyone here was a fan of Marvel comics, when I was a kid, um, I used to have a book called How to Draw the Comics the Marvel Way by Stan Lee and John Buscema. And it actually taught me a lot of really early, and it's a great, it's a great um, book, especially for kids, but even for adults who dig adult comics and whatnot. Um, but it teaches a lot of like art school lessons earlier on before I ever went to art school or had formal art training. Um, taught about perspective and anatomy. But one thing that was that I really stuck with me is the idea of kind of being able to look at the world and breaking it down into its basic forms, its basic shapes. So the idea being like taking a bear or something like that and breaking it down into a series of simpler shapes. And in this way to kind of help you um, kind of navigate what you see and, and more easily describe and put it down on paper. So once you have the basic forms down there, then you can start to add detail and build as opposed to looking at a face or something complicated and it's very intimidating because you're like, how can I draw this hand or this foot or this, you know, complicated building. When you break it down first to its very basic shapes, it's rectangles, it's, or if you wanted to get a little more 3D down to like boxes and squares and, and cones, it's a lot easier to digest those things. And once you kind of build your structure with the basic shapes that you see, um, and really look for those shapes in nature, um, then you'll start to add detail on top and, but your forms will be there. So it's basically modeling clay. You know, you start with your basic form, or if you've, anyone's ever done 3D modeling, when you have a very basic shapes, and then you start to move into smaller and smaller polygons or start to, to mold those things into more detail, but you have their basic forms there. So everything is kind of connected. It also helps you with your proportions because you've already laid out 
all the basic shapes and how you see them. And you can see how big the shapes are in relation to each other, as opposed to trying to do that with the specific details of what you see. So what I want everyone to do is to kind of look at their still life again and using rectangles and, and circles and triangles and spheres and very basic geometric shapes to redraw what they see using those those shapes. And, and if you have some time to start adding a little bit of shading in to give it volume if anyone's drawn before, that's a helpful thing too. But what I want you to do is go back to your paper with um, that has a, a rectangles drawn on it. So draw if you have, haven't done that, if you haven't drawn another piece of paper with some rectangles on it, take a second now, draw, take a piece of paper, draw a couple of rectangles on it. And we're gonna draw again, and this time again, looking for the shapes that we see and starting to build our forms. The same still life that we've been doing, but use that to um, to start to, to those shapes to draw it. Um, all right, so I'm gonna start it. We're gonna do three minutes on this. And then we're gonna actually, yeah, we'll do three minutes. We'll do four, yeah, we'll do three minutes. Um, let's do four. Um, and if, if you get done really quickly, um, feel free to start adding smaller shapes on top of it to start adding those details or do a second one if you want to. But let's do four minutes. It gives you some time to kind of see those shapes and render them and then start to add more details. Like if you draw your face as a just a, an oval and start to add those little eyeballs on top of it or the, no, the shape of the nose is a basic triangle, eyes is basic ovals, the mouth is a basic oval and then start to add the details on top of that. So four minutes starting now. We're gonna draw our still life again as basic shapes. All right. So how'd that feel for everyone? Everyone cool? Anyone have any thoughts while before we move on? This is kind of my like quick little rendition of my composition. See, I started to be able to kind of see things as these basic shapes and break it down. And actually takes a lot of pressure out off of the idea of like having to get things perfect or making it look like things because all you need to do is get those basic forms in there and if anyone's ever done gesture drawing um in an art, art class or anything like that where you basically take the basic gesture and just draw basically a circle for a head and a little line for a spine or in in the in, in the arms and then start to fill shapes on top of that it really kind of takes the pressure off it's also great for drawing hands and feet which are seem kind of like complex and difficult things to draw especially when you start to break the hands and the feet down into um, their little shapes and basic shapes they become a lot less intimidating a lot easier to kind of track your proportions and your size and how things are start to look and once you have that basic skeleton built you can start to add again add that details on whether you want to draw over what you've done in a darker form or use tracing paper or this is a good opportunity if you want to take these sketches and one thing that's really fun with these sketches, if anyone draws on an iPad or anything, is to take these rough sketches that are done on paper. Um, and I encourage people not to do these exercises on an iPad. I can't stop you, but try not to, um, because you can go back and erase. But what's fun is taking these sketches you've started and and then taking them into your, onto your iPad or into Photoshop or however else you draw using some tracing paper, and then start to draw and paint over them. And you can start to you know use these as the basis for paintings or for digital paintings or something more you know, kind of tighter that you spend more time on. So you can look at these as exercise. And if you think, of, look back at, at some of the famous artists of all time, a lot of them did this. They, you know, do dozens of, of sketches and studies before they started getting into their final painting and piece. So you can start to look at these as studies for a, a, a more um, finished piece, whether it's more realistic or more abstract, but these are just great ways to kind of start to get ideas into your head, get forms into your head and start to build compositions and become comfortable with that. So, and the reason we do it quick again is we don't wanna make too many changes. We wanna just kind of keep going. So now that we've done the shape drawing, we have one more basic drawing exercise. Um, and this is um, drawing in lights and darks. So basically what we wanna do now is look at our composition and just kind of pull out sort of the lights and darks that we see, you know, and, and really allow those, those shadows and those tones to help create the shapes that we're doing. Hold on one second. Griffin. 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 I'm on the live stream, so shh. Sorry, kids. Um, so basically we wanna really find the um, lights and darks in our form and using uh, just darks, all we're gonna do is draw in our darks. We wanna fill those in and help those create our forms as opposed to using line and shapes. And again, I really don't want you to think too much about color start to think about the relative color. What's a dark and what's a light in what you're looking at? 
And what we're going to do is, is basically thresholding that. If we, what I mean by that is basically you take a value and either it's a zero or a one. Zero is white and one is black. So just fill in the blacks and we're going to create our, our forms and our compositions just with those. And it's really kind of fun, actually. It almost, again, feels kind of like a modeling kind of way where we start to feel in almost just kind of like the negative space to help create um, the forms and the shapes. So I'm going to give you guys um, four minutes to do this because it's a little bit of a slower process. You want to take your time. Four minutes, look at your composition again, um, work in a rectangle and um, start building that composition based upon just the darks that you see. Use the darks to kind of create your forms. Um, so I'm going to give you guys four minutes and start. And it's helpful in this to use something which is going to, nothing too light, like a very light pen is going to drive you a little bit crazy because it's going to take a long time to sort of fill in those shapes. So you want to work with something a little more substantial, like a, a little darker pen. A Sharpie is cool. It's a little ambitious or like a, a dark art pen or something like that, just to sort of um, give yourself a little bit more, make it a little easier on you to get that, that shape down so you don't um, have to spend a lot of time just like scribbling in to make it dark. So but yeah, I'll give you guys a warning in two minutes and let's draw lights and darks in this composition. And if you want to draw sort of the outline of the shape that you see that you're going to make the tone with, then that's fine too. Because sometimes it's hard to just work simply with... Um, Simply just drawing the line, the, the scribbling it. So feel free to kind of outline the shape that you're going to fill in dark and then draw with that as well if you want to. That feels more comfortable. And even working in like a dark object when the whole thing looks dark, for instance, right now I'm going to draw this wine bottle. Um, what's interesting about the, a wine bottle or something reflective is like even though it looks black, you know, there's actually – quite a bit of like relative lights and darks in there with the, especially with reflective surfaces, you can kind of find those. So it's an interesting exercise to begin to find those lights and darks in, in an object that might look pretty light or pretty dark altogether. So if you have those objects in your compositions, I would totally encourage you to kind of focus on those too and see what you can kind of draw out from something which is seemingly all dark or seemingly all light. and start to look at tones almost in, 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 the, in the values in sort of relative terms. About 30 seconds left, guys. All right, how'd y'all do? Dismiss this, you.
So I was gonna, as I was talking, I have a wine bottle at the edge of my composition. I really started to kind of try to figure out the wine bottle itself and start to look at the lights and the darks. I mean, this takes a little bit more time, this exercise, because you really want to spend some time exploring those different things. And when I started to look at my composition, you know, things, some things look lighter than others because my wine bottle is awfully dark, but I really tried to look at what was a dark and what was a light and kind of break them down into those twos. And I started to build these forms and not just what was in the foreground, the wine bottle, but also starting to look at what's in the background. There are some boxes and stuff kind of in my background because I'm kind of been moving and just to kind of figure out what there is a light and dark and start to build the forms of those things with the lights and dark. So I'm super curious to see what you guys have been drawing. So I'd love it if you guys wanted to share with me. Um, anyone have any comments or thoughts as we move through this? Um, until we're going to move to our last little quick exercise before we have to go. Okay, cool. So I think um, a couple of things, just a couple of tips that I have before we do our last exercise. One thing is um, as you do these exercises, the, these things, I think changing um, environments is actually good. I know we're all kind of cooped in our houses and it's kind of tough, but if you have like a backyard or a porch or a fire escape or whatever you, you have, uh, going outside to do some of these sketches is really great. Um, obviously keeping safe social distance from yourself, but uh, um, and just noticing the change in things like light and depth when you start to look at things far away um, as compared to looking at stuff really close up inside your house and really kind of noticing those things and kind of changing it up so you can kind of build those muscles, not just with the same um, thing inside, but like, you know, start to build a, a wider repertoire of the way you kind of see the world. So um, I really suggest you again, like this is me out on the trail a few weeks ago, like really going out and kind of finding different scenarios and different forms and different kind of situations to draw in. And I think it'll help you kind of build a wider, build those muscles in a wider and more um, varied way. Another thing is, um, especially when you're starting to get, do something quick and you want to get some tones down quickly, um, think about using a light marker or light pen or something like that, like a highlighter, um, let's see, like this. Um, just kind of start, start when you start to build those basic shapes, you know, especially with shape drawing, to use them to kind of block out some color and block out forms because you can get a very basic form really quickly done with a, a marker or highlighter. like so and then if you have time you can go back in with a darker and finer point um type of, of medium like a, a sharpie or like a, a a ballpoint pen or whatever it is and start to add in use those what you've just blocked out with the thicker stuff to sort of help guide you and start to fill in some details on top of it so um using that it's almost like a, if anyone's familiar with like watercolor is kind of laying down a wash first and then starting to add in your detail. But it really helps you to move, be able to move quickly, especially when you're doing shape drawing or lights and darks, and get those basic forms down and then start to add in kind of the details on top of it as you go. Um, so our last exercise we're going to do real quick before we go is now knowing all these different things that we've done, these different exercises and these different ways of kind of looking at the world, perceiving and rendering it. We're gonna do our four minute burn again, and I'm gonna let you guys kind of do it as you want, but um, let's kind of bring all those different things that we've kind of just learned into how we do this, this four minute burn. And again, you can you can do it just line, you can do it just shapes, or you can kind of bring all those elements in at the same time, but just start to be cognizant of that as you do your four minute burn now, now that you've kind of learned these different ways of looking at the world. So one more four minute burn before we go. Um, and I just want to thank you all for joining me today. And before before we go, I'd also like to thank, because there's some more people to thank, of course. Um, I'd like to thank, there we go. Oh, I'd like to thank Waterloo Greenway, um, the, this program that they've done, this um, Waterloo in Place, basically reaching out to the community when you couldn't be there physically and they'd run so many wonderful things, you know, in the past. And so I think it's really great that they've adapted here and trying to keep connections with community creatively. Um, and this is a series of workshops. So, you know, keep them checking out their um, website, waterlooGreenway.org um, or their Facebook page. And uh, there'll be upcoming workshops. There was a great one last week by uh, Jay Muscat, who, who's doing um, mosaics. And I'm sure they're gonna have some great stuff coming up in the, in the, in the future. So check them out. Um, 
Uh, sponsors are BBVA, the Powell Foundation, Susan Vaughn Foundation, Waterloo Sparkling Water, of course, and The Word Company. Um, thank you to all you guys for sponsoring this. It's been great. And again, everyone kind of helping each other out. And before I go, also, if anyone, again, has the means and the inclination um, and wants to give a donation to something, there's HAM, Health Alliance for Austin Musicians. Let me get that up in there. Myham.org. Um, you know, Austin Musicians being really the backbone of the culture of the city really need your help, especially this time when venues are closed and there's not the opportunity for them to go out and, and make the money doing the wonderful stuff they have as much as they have. I mean, there have been some great live streams, but they really need support. So my ham is always a good charity to support. And also, if anyone knows the reference in my t-shirt and wants to put it into the comments, um, that would be extra points as well. Anyway, so let's do one more four minute burn and see what you got based, based on what you learned today. And let's start, put down that, well, actually, let me just oh, let me grab that paper first. Ugh. Yeah, draw your rectangle. And let's do that one last four minute burn. Start now. I'll give you guys a two minute warning. Again, just draw your composition, all that you've seen, and use the bait, all these different tools that you've learned. You can use one of them, or you can use all of them together, or two of them together. You can do some shapes and then co contours or or you can do some shapes and add some the, the shading on top of the lights and darks you know just it's up to you but like you know whatever feels right there are no rules on this one and one day I'll be actually be good at drawing Deadpool I'm not good at it now. And remember, really, especially when you want try out different kinds of mediums, mess with different kinds of markers, different kinds of pens. Um, you know, if you want to use some ink or wet media, that's really fun too. And don't really please, and, and I gotta emphasize this enough is, is don't worry about mistakes. There are no mistakes in doing this. A lot of people get hung up on imperfection. There is no perfect, and there's no imperfect. There's just doing as far as drawing. And again, we're really looking to just kind of especially with these exercises to kind of build your muscles. And this is something you can do just for fun. Please keep these, you know, a pen and a marker on the side of your paper. Um, I'm sorry, on the side of your table and do these once a day. You'll a, just doing the act of it is very, at least for me, feels a lot better. It's very cathartic. It, again, feels very much like exercise. After I'm done, I feel a lot better. And um, But you'll really start to do this if you do one, one or two of these every day. Really start to see how you become a lot more comfortable with the drawing and and comfortable what you do and, and actually having a sketchbook where you keep all these drawings in is a great exercise because then you can start to see the progression and start to remember those moments and start to kind of like see how you improve and see observe different ways different things you've done and different mistakes you might have made that actually taught you something and were celebrated and wonderful like a, a wonderful drip or errant lines or way you kind of approach something and again we don't have to look for realism in all these drawings it's really just about you know, translating what you see in the world, putting that down on paper, and then communicating that to somebody else. So, or it could just be for yourself. So really, I encourage you guys to do this um, once a day. And I'd love if anyone, again, wants to share. Um, my email address is ami at gonzoviz.com. I'd love to see what you have. I have some other workshops coming up as well in the future. I usually generally try to do like one a week. So if anyone wants to go to my website, gonzoviz.com, sign up for my email list, they'll be on the list. And I'll let you know when I have workshops coming up or if you Follow me on Instagram or Facebook. I will also be posting about upcoming uh, events and such. So we've got 30 seconds left on this one. Sorry for not giving you the two-minute warning. I was too busy yammering away. Okay. 
and you know these can these can move to you know you know every drawing you don't have to do in the future doesn't have to be four minutes or 30 seconds you can do longer form stuff but really use this as a building block for those longer form um, drawings and paintings or as a warm up warm up exercise before you get to it because it really helps make you learn making those quick decisions really helps you kind of help build those muscles and build that comfort of observing the world and putting it down on paper. So I was talking instead of drawing. So my drawing is not really super far along, but you'll see I started to get a little further using some shading, using contour, using lights and darks to start to build my composition in a way, um, which is interesting and really kind of filling up those pages. Like don't just look at an object and draw it, but think about what's behind it and what's in front. And, and don't worry about trying to create the illusion of depth or near and far use those tools that you've we i've taught you and i've kind of shared with you those things once you start to use them and be comfortable will help inform those things they'll help create those um those depths and those details and the way it feels so um i appreciate you guys all spending time with me today i'm trying to think if there's anything else i want to let you know but um uh hopefully i'll get to you know people other people will see this and share it and i love again if anyone wants to share any thoughts with me or there's the comments right now if not then please feel free to um Email me, amigonzoviz.com, share these drawings with me, and just uh, share this with other people as well. And hopefully, you know, we'll help help a lot of us get through this, these kind of challenging times. And it's a great exercise to kind of break up the day while you're waiting for your tea to boil or for your meeting to start or for whatever. Or when the, everyone, all the kids are asleep and you want to take a moment and just do something, try doing a four-minute burn, do some little quick drawings. You'll, hopefully, you'll, that'll help you through the day and it'll Make you feel good. Anyway, thank you so much. Um, and I will talk to you all soon.